I'm Karen Lunsford and I'm from the University of California, Santa Barbara. And I've been a member of the caucus, I was trying to remember, I think at least 10 years now. Um, you know, I, I, the first caucus that I came to, um, I was reporting out on a study I had done as a graduate student about uh, plagiarism issues, which is one of the issues that the caucus takes up regularly. And what I had done was a an assignment in my business writing class when I had asked people to do some definition work, you know, define plagiarism, define collaboration, define the World Wide Web, and there was something else I had them define. And what was fascinating was to uh, see how the students were defining collaboration versus plagiarism. Oh, and the fact that it was digital and how they were working among those three definitions. And essentially, uh, what they were saying is, if someone has posted it, they want you to collaborate with them, which means you can take it. And therefore, it's not plagiarism. you know. And it was just a fascinating venue in which to, to present that. Uh, study is a very sort of young graduate student at the time, you know, sort of uh, working out those ideas and I found a very supportive place to do that. And um, So the caucus has, oh, I forget how old the caucus is, it's, it's, it's I'm talking to Jeff years. over there, how, how, 19, when? I think it's at least 19 years old, I've been here for 14 years. Yeah, so 19, 19 years old and so it has been the place where people have come together to talk about it and talk about all sorts of IP issues. So issues such as plagiarism, but also what is authorship, uh, what are some of the legislation that is affecting uh, different kinds of intellectual property, so it's copyright as well as patent, as well as trademark, uh, what different institutions are putting into place in order to regulate intellectual property, who owns intellectual property in an academic setting? Do students get a chance to own intellectual property? Do faculty own intellectual property? If so, what's the difference between what the campus owns and what the individual instructor owns? All sorts of issues along these lines. So the caucus has had a quite wide representation of interests in it, which is one thing that I find very fascinating about it. The caucus has existed for quite some time, and then the IP committee, the Intellectual Property Committee, was generated out of the caucus as official representation to the four C's. And the IP committee is part of the governance structure of the, of the four C's. They report directly to the executive committee. So they are actually able to um, develop statements official statements to be put out by the four C's. They're able to uh, promote resolutions that the caucus first develops and then um, makes official by sending up through the IP committee. It's a group that works with the caucus. The caucus often acts as a task force for things that come down from the IP committee. So it's a nice relationship, I think, that we have. I was chair of the IP committee for, for three years before Jeff. <laughs> be talking to in a minute. So I was, I'm, I'm the immediate past chair of the, uh, of the committee. And it was fascinating to sort of s see how the governing structure of the four C's works and how you can, um, again, raise concern, raise issues with the executive committee that will impact the entire C's membership as well as, it turns out, the NCTE membership because we tend to be the organization that is also addressing issues that affect the entire NCTE. Um, and so we've kind of taken on that role, even though it's not really officially part of our mandate. Um, we started things like the IP annual and the IP reports, the monthly reports, um, in order to fulfill one of our mandates, which is to inform the CCC and NCT memberships about IP issues.